Okay. Let's get started here. So hi, everybody. My name is Jenna Meyer. I work in housing here at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, and I want to say thank you for joining me this evening. Um, we are going to be going over the process for the 2021-2022 um, school year uh, for housing. And I do want to preface this by saying that if you have any current questions about arrival or housing for this year, that those need to be asked at a later time, whereas we're trying to focus on um, our questions for next year. And if you have any questions specifically and you wanna drop them into the chat, there will be time at the end for me to go through some questions um, that would pertain to the entire group. Um, but for right now, I'm gonna share my screen and go over a quick PowerPoint and then I will walk through the process on what it looks like on our website and through the housing portal. Amanda, I don't think I'm the host right now. It won't let me share. Okay, try now, sorry. That's okay. Okay, that's gonna work. Perfect. Okay, is everybody able to see my screen right now? Okay, great. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so like I said, my name is Jenna Meyer. I work in housing here at the University of Pittsburgh, and we're going to be going over the housing process and options for the 2021-2022 academic year. A couple of things we're going to be um, discussing this evening, uh, the actual overview of the process as a guaranteed upper class student, some details on suite and apartment style selection versus regular general room selection. We're going to highlight um, some building options as an upper class student. And then, like I said before, there will be option. I mean, there will be time for question and answers at the end. OK, so let's hop right into it um, for all of my guaranteed upper class students. Um, you should have gotten an email um, a little bit ago saying that your lottery number is live and that you're now able to apply for housing. But, you know, what happens now? Um, so first, you want to understand how your lottery number works. And you'll use this specific number for two reasons or for, for yeah, for two different reasons. Um, the first, it is used to establish winners for suite and apartment style bids. And second, it is used to determine your selection time during general room selection. So I will go, I will go more in depth on the suite and apartment style bids, but those are the only two ways that you'll need to use your lottery number. Um, and if you are going to be a part of a group for um, general room selection or suite and apartment style bids, then you will use the best lottery number in your group. Okay, so that's lottery number. Second, you wanna make sure that you complete your housing application by February 1st. So the deadline to complete your housing application and pay your $325 deposit for next year is 11.59 p.m. Um, on February 1st. And if you decide to apply after that point, you may end up losing your guarantee. So you want to make sure that you're um, that you're following all the deadlines to make sure that you're able to retain your guarantee for next year. Next, you want to identify what kind of housing makes the best sense for you. So this is where I like to tell students to think about all of the different kinds of housing that we have available 
and to kind of rank what they're looking for best case to worst case. So if I'm a student who's living in a single this year and I realize that I really enjoy having a single, then I might only try to go through the process next for next year to get a single for myself. If I decide that I, you know, I'm living somewhere that has a communal bathroom this year and my number one priority is to have a private bathroom or a semi-private bathroom, then I'm going to look at all of those options that have semi-private or private bathrooms for myself. Um, something else to consider is our communities that we offer on campus. Um, so there are LLCs um, and non-LLC communities. So if I'm a student who's currently in the first year engineering LLC and I really like the community and I really think that it's benefiting me and my academic work and my, you know, my social aspect of living in a residence hall and I want to continue that, then maybe I will apply for the upper class student um, engineering LLC. Um, so your housing application is due by February 1st, but you don't have to necessarily decide what your adventure is going to be until February 4th. So if you decide that you want to have a group of students and try to get a suite or an apartment for next year, that is when that application is due. Um, if you want to apply for an LLC, that's also when that application is due. Um, if you want to try to retain your current space, that's also when that application is due. So we do give you a little bit of wiggle room after your housing application is due. Um, to figure out what that next step is. And we will send a reminder email out after February 1st that says, it looks like you applied for housing. Don't forget you have these options for you as an upper class student to figure out if you wanna do the following things. Um, something else that I really wanna to touch on is um, why you should live on campus and why it does not hurt to apply and go through the process. So some students, open up their lottery number and see a high number and just give up um, when they don't realize that it does not hurt to try to go through the entire process and know that if it comes that, you know, I put in a bid for an apartment and I don't win a bid, so I don't get to choose an apartment. And then I try to go through general room selection and I don't see any rooms that I like. So I end up not finding a space that I absolutely love that you're still able to cancel your housing application by April 15th and still get your $325 back. So there's really no reason to not at least try the entire process to see if there's if you end up somewhere that you're gonna love. Okay, so the first process I would love to go over is the retention process. And a lot of students don't actually realize that they have the opportunity to retain in their space. Um, and this is mostly for our rising juniors because um, unfortunately students that are living in all first year buildings are not able to retain. So if you currently live in, you know, Sutherland or Towers A or B, you know, Holland Hall or Nordenburg, any building that's a full first year building, you're not able to retain in. But if you currently live in a building such as Panther, Irvis, McCormick, Brackenridge, um, Tower C, Lothrop, or any apartment style like Bouquet, Ruskin, or Center Plaza, you do have the opportunity to retain. Um, and how you can retain is um, you need to think of the total number of people that can reside in your space. So if I'm in a four person Irvis suite, at least two of us need to retain in that space. So myself and a roommate can retain, and then we are responsible for filling those other two spots. So if we have two friends on our floor that we want to live with next year, we are able to pull them in on the retention form and create a full group and keep and stay in the same room for next year. Um, you just want to make sure that all the students that are a part of your group are all guaranteed upper class students. They've all completed their housing application and paid their deposit by February 1st, and that you completed the retention form, which is online, which I will show um, a little bit later. Okay, so the second um, option that you have as a rising upper class student 
um, is to put in a suite or an apartment style bid. And this, I will say, is the most popular option for our um, upper class students. And I do want to um, say that if you are a current first year student, this might be a little foreign to you because as a incoming first year student, we assign you a bed space. However, as an upper class student, the power is your, in your hands. So you're able to pick your own housing. Housing does not pick your housing for you, um, if that makes sense. So what some students don't understand about um, bids is that you're bidding for the size of the space and not a specific space. So if I know that I want to be, um, if it's myself and two friends, then I know that we are putting in a bid for a three person suite or apartment style space. Um, so my options are going to be um, Center Plaza, Bouquet Gardens, Ruskin Hall, Panther Hall, McCormick. Um, I believe that's all of them. And whenever we put in our bid, we rank the winner by points and then lottery number. And if we win a bid, our bid is associated with a selection time and whatever is available at our selection time is what we have to choose from. So if there are, let's say 100 three person spaces on campus for groups of three, and there are 100 groups that won, group number one first is gonna have the opportunity to select from any of those 100 spaces. Whereas if I'm 50th on that list, I'm only gonna have what's available left from what the first 49 groups didn't choose, if that makes sense. So um, I will say that, you know, three person apart, there are a lot more three person spaces on campus than um, two person. So three person is definitely a, a more popular group size to bid for, but there are a lot of different options for three person groups. Um, and I will go through some of those options a little bit later, but I do want to go over um, the bid process and then how we decide the winners. So to complete a bid, um, you'll designate a group leader to be the, um, to start the bid. Um, and I'll show this on the website as well, but uh, the group leader will go into the bid and invite the group members. So they'll need people soft numbers of their group members that they want to associate themselves with and they'll invite them so whenever they invite them invitations will be sent to those group members saying you have been invited to jenna's group and then the group members will only be able to accept those invitations if they've completed their housing application so then they'll go into the bid and accept that invitation um and to have a complete bid, all the members have to have a complete housing application and all the members have to accept their invitations. Um, and then we announce the winners on, I believe, February 16th. Um, and that will be posted online. So I will now go over how we pick the winners. Um, so we do it by point, then by lottery number. So rising juniors individually are worth three points and rising sophomores are worth two points. And we, and junior are worth more points because it's their last year on campus. Um, so we do prioritize um, because sophomores do have the opportunity to have two more years on campus. So if I am in a group of three juniors and my lottery number is 4,000, and there's a group of three sophomores and their lottery number is 100, the group of three juniors will automatically be before those three sophomores because my group has nine points and their group has six points. So the way that we rank the winners is by points and then lottery number. So all the groups of juniors will win first and then those mixed groups of juniors and sophomores because their points are more than all of the points of just all groups of all sophomores, if that makes sense. 
Um, and then, like I said before, you win a selection time. So based off of the order in which you win, you'll be given a selection time, and then you go on during that selection time and get to pick your housing for your group. So this grid here is something that can be found on our website, um, and it does a really good job at um, differentiating the different housing options that upper class students have. Um, and you can see here that this is where um, the suite and apartment style size, that's where I like to tell students to start. So if I know that I am a group of two, then I know that my options are only Ruskin Hall, Center Plaza, um, and Forbes Craig Apartments. Whereas if I'm a group of three, then I know that my options are McCormick, Panther, Bouquet Gardens, Center Plaza, Forbes Craig, and Ruskin. Um, and it also does a really good job at showing, um, you know, what kind of room types they are, um, where they're located on campus, um, and then how many residents are living in the building, if there's air conditioning and things like that. Um, and if, if um, 12 month housing is offered in those locations, and I do wanna highlight that Center Plaza Apartments, I will say is one of our most underrated places on campus to live. Um, and I say that because it is 0.9 miles from campus, but we do have direct shuttles and um, city bus transportation that go right to the apartments. And the difference between Center Plaza and like a Ruskin Hall, which is located closer to campus, is a Ruskin three-person apartment is a single and a double, whereas Center Plaza, each person has their own bedroom and there's still air conditioning, there's still a fitness center, um, you know, there's still a full kitchen and living room, it's still fully furnished. There is parking available there. Um, and also Center Plaza is gonna be offered as a 12 month housing option for our students this year. So if you're in a group of three and you're deciding that you want to stay in Center Plaza for 12 months, we do have the options to start your 12 month housing there, May of 2021. Um, that will end um, May of 2021 of next, or maybe, I mean, May of 2022 next year, or we have it starting in August of 2021, and it will go all the way until August of 2022. So if you are a student who is in a particular major that may require you to be in Pittsburgh for an internship next summer, and you don't want to have to deal with finding a sub or summer housing for next year, and you have roommates that you're interested in, um, I would definitely consider Center Plaza an option because um, you don't have to have a meal plan there. Like I said, you have the free reigns of an apartment style accommodation um, and the flexibility of the University of Pittsburgh still being like your landlord. Um, and I can go over more housing options too in the Q&A, but I just wanna highlight this spreadsheet. Okay, so general room selection itself is uh, a really simple process and it's for students um, I would say that really are just here to live on campus um, and aren't aren't um, I wouldn't say particular and like where they want to live but basically are open to all places um, so the way that it works is your lottery number is already associated to a time so if I know that I'm a rising junior and my lottery number is 450, then I already know that I can go on um, Tuesday, March 9th of this year, and my selection time is between 11 and 11.15. And the great news is if I don't go on and select at that time, I'm able to go on and select any day after that and any time after that. Um, and general room selection is also a collection of rooms that nobody chose during suite and apartment style selection and then all the general rooms like tower c lothrop panther Irvis, doubles are are included in that and you can still pull in roommates so if i know that i have a best friend that we just want to live together um, with a private bathroom and panther and Irvis are our number one choice because 
that has air conditioning, we get the private bath, we're located near the perch, um, that we're just gonna skip suite selection and go right for general room selection and I'm gonna pull in my best friend and we're gonna pick our panther room together. Um, so I do want to highlight general room selection and that is also when you will um, use your lottery number for that time. Okay, so some other housing options um, are things like I had said before. Um, so here's the list of all of the LLCs to our upper class students. Um, you do have to apply for the LLCs. Some of the LLCs require a one credit course to be taken with living in the community. Um, but you can find out all that information on the LLC website through Student Affairs. So what we do is we, um, all the applications are gathered on February 5th and um, the LLC partners go through those applications and accept students into the LLCs. And then um, they notify the students that they were accepted in the LLC. And then we assign the students to the housing in the LLC. Um, I will say that if you are a student applying for an LLC and you have a roommate request, um, that if the roommate is not applying for the LLC, that the LLC may reach out to you if there is no space for the roommate because they're trying to fill the LLC with students who have applied to the LLC to see if you want to be accepted in the LLC or if you'd rather be released into general room selection um, with your roommate. But if your roommate is also applying for the LLC, then that's great because um, that makes things even better. Um, I will say, though, that if you are applying for an LLC, you are not able to try to retain your space and you're not able to put in a suite and apartment style bid. You can only do one or the other. And by filling out the LLC application, you will check a box on the contract that says by completing the LLC contract, you are foregoing any suite and apartment style bid that you may have already been a part of. Um, so I just want to preface that. So this is also, uh, this calendar is also on our website, um, but I did wanna highlight again that February 1st is the deadline to submit the $325 deposit and complete the housing application. And that February 4th is the deadline for the retention forms, the bid applications and the LLC applications. And then there are some other dates in February that are highlighted like um, whenever retention is on the 11th, and then whenever we post the winners on the 16th, and then suite and apartment style selection takes place at the end of February. Okay, so I am going to stop sharing my screen and open up for some Q&A. Um, let's close out of here. Pull up my camera here. Um, I see that I have a lot of chats. Um, so I'm just going to start from the beginning, but I shouldn't have stopped sharing my screen because I'm actually going to hop back in to um, the portal to show you how to actually put in or invite roommates and to be a part of your group for a suite and apartment style bit. Um, so I'm just going to quickly share my screen one more time to go over that. Okay, is everybody able to? Okay, so I think I'm good. I'm sharing my screen. Okay, so um, this is Selection Central, um, which is located on the Panther Central website, um, and it's a great resource for students who may be a little bit confused about the process of a guaranteed upper class student. Um, you can go through the different sections here about retention or suite selection and general room selection. And then back on the home page at the bottom, there are important dates and deadlines. And this is where you can find that calendar that I had in the PowerPoint uh, for February and March. And then the selection schedule, which is at the bottom here. And these will all get emailed out as well. Um, you'll get emailed reminders as a student when selection is coming and when things are due. Um, so that is that. And then I want to show you all 
how to access um, the portal. Okay, so what I did here is I went to my pit and I actually typed in at the top. I just type in 2021 and I'm clicking on this link here, the 2021-2022 housing applications and information button. It is gonna direct me to pit pay because there is a deposit required. So I always wanna click make deposit and then I'm gonna click continue. And this is the portal. So I'm technically a guaranteed upper class student. So I'm gonna click on that button here. And this is where uh, we outline for you like step one and step two. Step one is going to be complete my housing application and step two is going to be, um, you know, choose what my option is below. So I'm actually going to walk you through what the application looks like here. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to go through all the wording. Um, your student should have access to this, um, but it is going to ask like, you know, personal contact information. It'll ask you emergency. Oh, emergency contact information. Um, I'm gonna fill out my meningitis form here. I've got a copy of the contract. I'm gonna sign that. Um, it's gonna ask me if I'm interested in grad guard, runner's insurance. This is not signing you up for grad guard. It's just asking if you're interested. Um, grad guard would reach out at a later time if you are interested. Um, if I'm interested in living in an LLC and at this time I'm not interested. Um, if I want to be a part of RSA, yep. Um, selecting uh, a preference for a meal plan next year. And then it's just going to say I'm almost done. Then I'm going to finish there. So my application is now complete. So now I'm gonna decide what I want to do. Um, if I want to go on and retain my room, I'm gonna open this form here. And this is the guidelines that I had stated before that you know 50% of the students must retain. Um, you have to fill the entire space. All students must you know, have a completed contract and pay the deposit. Um, they have to complete this form and they need to um, participate in retention on February 11. And this is where I'm gonna send my invitations if I'm interested in inviting a group member. So if I wanna involve, if I want to invite Holly, this hit select and then it'll send her the invitation. And then Holly will get the email that says you've been invited to Jenna's group and she'll just has to, she just has to come onto the same form and click accept. Okay, so for a suite and apartment style bid, I would click on this form here. And this is where I decide, you know, am I interested in trying to put in a bid for a one person apartment? Um, am I interested in doing a suite in apartment style um, bid as a single gender or if I'm interested in doing a gender inclusive group? Um, and at this point, I think I'm going to do a gender inclusive apartment bid. And this is where I'm going to invite my friend Holly. Oh, Holly didn't complete her housing application. So I'm actually not able to um, invite Holly just yet. So once Holly is has completed the housing application, then I'll be able to invite her. And that is where we're gonna put a two right here. And then I'm gonna click finish. Um, but because I didn't invite Molly, I mean, Holly, I'm gonna click cancel. And then I'm just gonna go back and put a one person bid in by myself. So as a one person bid, all I have to do is go to this form and click finish. Um, and then 
myself as a single person put in a bid for a one person apartment. Okay. So because I just put that bid in, um, it's not going to let me complete my LLC application because I am only allowed to do one or the other. Um, but if I was interested in applying for an LLC rather than doing a bid, then I would just have to contact Panther Central and have them update my application. And then I would be able to go in to complete the LLC app. So now I'm going to close out of here and unshare my screen and answer some of these questions because I see that we have a lot coming. I can start reading some off to you, Jenna. That will help. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks, Amanda. Okay, does room retention require more than one student? Only if you are trying to retain a space that has more than one space available. So if I'm in a Panther double and I don't wanna live with my roommate next year, I can try to retain that space myself, but I have to find another person to fill that space in the double. But if I'm in Lothrop or Tower C, which is a single, then I only need myself to retain that space. If I am a first year student this year, but I was unable to live on campus due to COVID, do I still have a guarantee for this coming year? If you are unsure of your guarantee status, I would contact Panther Central. Um, I would just send them an email. And we can let you know if you're a guaranteed student or not. But generally, if you were a student who was guaranteed housing this year as a first year student, and you chose to live at home, um, but you still applied for housing and canceled the appropriate way, then you should still have a guarantee for next year, yes. If you're a junior doing general, general room selection alone, will you be paired with another junior? Um, not necessarily. So whenever you're going in as in through general room selection, you can be paired with any kind of other student um, whether that's a rising sophomore or a rising junior, it just depends on what space you're looking for. So whatever is available for you at during your selection time, that's like you select where you want to live, but we don't necessarily say who's going to be living in that space. If I am all alone and do not win a bid for apartment style, what will happen? So if you are a single person putting in a bid, um, you would only be able to put in a one person bid. Um, you're not able to put in a bid for a group size larger than one. So if you don't wanna bid for a one person apartment, then you would go through general room selection and you would then be able to assign yourself whatever's available. So if by chance a group of three who chose Center Plaza during apartment selection um, one of those students canceled or got pulled in to be an RA and they have an opening in their apartment, you could assign yourself a vacant space in that apartment and have two roommates. So you are able to assign yourself anything that's available during general room selection. Does your housing deposit from the 2020-2021 school year carry over into the 2021-2022 school year if you stayed home? At this time, it does not. Um, we are working with student financial services to make sure that your housing deposit goes towards um, your tuition for the spring because that's generally where your deposit goes anyway. So if you're applying for housing for next year and it's requiring you to pay a 325 deposit, that 325 is going towards your housing for the spring of 2022. But if you decide not to live on campus, um, say COVID extends itself a full other year, then that 325 would just go towards your tuition for the spring. If you apply to the upperclassmen LLC, when do you pick your housing and roommates? So LLCs, you apply for the housing, and then if you have a roommate request, there's a supplemental form on the application that says, 
put your roommate requests in here. But if you don't have roommate requests, then the LLC will pair you with other students who have applied to the LLC um, to be a part of that community. So you don't necessarily pick your roommates to be a part of the LLC. The LLC will pick for you if you don't have a roommate request. I know we directed everyone to the calendar, but just to reiterate, when do students hear about their choice slash lottery? Uh, they should already know their lottery number that is on the portal that was right above where the housing application was. It says view your lottery number here. Um, and then applications due February 1st. Supplemental application is due February 4th if you want to try to win a bid. And if you win a bid, you will find out on February 16th. So you'll be emailed if you're a winner saying, hey, you won. Go on and view your selection time. How do you know if you're a guaranteed upper class student? Um, I will say that if you have not gotten emails at this point every week saying go on and apply by February 1st and you are concerned that you should have a guarantee, I would contact Panther Central um, because we, um, we can update you on if you have a guarantee or not. But if you paid your deposit and did everything appropriately as an incoming first year student, and applied on time and everything like that, you should have a guarantee. Will the bid be based off of the leader's lottery number or the lowest lottery number in the group? How the lowest decide? number. Yeah, so the lowest lottery number wins. So the leader doesn't necessarily have to have the best lottery number. Um, the leader is just, I say, who the most responsible person is in the group. So we all have that one friend who tends to take care of everybody else, I would designate them as that person, but um, you are using the best lottery number for the group. What happens if you don't win a bid? So if you don't win a bid, then you will go through general room selection. Um, and that doesn't mean that you are, you know, left with what nobody wants. It's um, just whatever has not been picked from suite and apartment style selection, and then anything that is open for general room selection. So I will say that I would create like a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Um, plan A being me and Amanda are gonna be your roommates no matter what. Plan B is, oh, we didn't get that double. We're gonna live in singles right next to each other. Plan C might be, oh, we don't mind if we have a random roommate, we're gonna book ourselves in a center plaza apartment and meet someone new. Is a meal plan required for all housing, even apartment style? Meal plans are only required for residence hall living because there are no kitchens. Um, so if you're in an apartment style, you do not need a meal plan. So that's Ruskin Hall, Center Plaza, and Bouquet Gardens. And just to note, you can take virtual tours of all of our buildings on our website. This is true. We have a question about Forbes Craig. Is that only for honor students or how can you go about living there? At this time, Forbes Craig is only for the honors community. So, um, yes. How do sorority suite bids work? Are they different? So I'm actually not that familiar with how sorority suites work. I do work directly with Greek life. So if you are a student who plans on being a part of a sorority next year and living in the community, um, the presidents um, send me their rosters with all the members and that's how we assign the housing. But the president, you work with the presidents of your organization to decide your housing and then that's how you're assigned. Should you do the housing process normally if you applied to be an RA? Yes, you always wanna make sure that you've completed your housing application because even if you've applied to be an RA, you need to have a signed housing contract to live on campus for next year. If I change my mind, is my deposit refundable? Yes, 
you have until April 15th to cancel your housing application, your deposit will be refunded. What is Panther Central's contact information? So Panther Central can be emailed at panthercentral at pit.edu and their phone number is 412-648-1100. I will say right now we are operating on um, our non-typical hours. So we're only 8.30 to 5 Monday through Friday, but starting next Tuesday, January 26th, we are back to our 24 hour office hours. How can I participate in the housing process as a transfer student? So if you are a transfer student and you are technically a non-guaranteed student, you still wanna make sure that you apply for housing as soon as possible because once all of the guaranteed housing processes are over, so once suite and apartment style selection is over and general room selection, um, we open up the rest of all the spaces on campus to our non-guaranteed students. So they have their own selection that happens generally um, from April through July based off of inventory. What are the options for gender inclusive suites? So I will say that I'm proud to announce that our gender inclusive housing has expanded to almost all throughout campus as an upper class student. Um, so it used to be that we were specifically in apartment style housing. However, we have expanded that to our suites as well. So um, in gender inclusive groups, you do have um, McCormick, Brackenridge, uh, Panther, Irvis, uh, Ruskin, Bouquet Garden, Center Plaza, and then our Gender and Sexuality LLC is located in Lothrop Hall, which is traditional residence hall. Um, so you do have a single and then a communal bathroom and a shared community. How can I uh, retain my apartment style housing if I have an empty bed space in the in the apartment? Can I ask where you're currently living? Ruskin. Okay. And are you, what size apartment are you living in? A triple. Okay. So if, and you're saying you're the only student living there? There are two students and one empty bed space. Okay. So the way that that would work is in a non-COVID year, if it were a triple, at least two students would have to retain in that space. And then you would have, um, you would have to fill that third space. However, since there are only technically two of you living right there right now, we are flexible so that you would be able to retain that space, but you would have to fill those other two spots. So I would be responsible. So I and my roommate would be responsible for finding a third person to fill that spot. Yes. All right. Yes. Would we be able to, um, if we weren't able to find a third person ourselves, would we be able to have one randomly assigned? Unfortunately not. The way that retention works is that you have to fill the full apartment. So if you were interested in trying to, you know, find a double or something, then the two of you could go through the suite and apartment style bid process and end up somewhere else um, in a two person apartment or suite. Right. Jenna, can you briefly go through the bid process again? We have some new people who joined us. Yeah, absolutely. So um, step one of the bid process is that you want to make sure that all members of your group have applied for housing and paid their deposit by February 1st. Um, or first you wanna establish your group size. So you wanna make sure if you're a group of two or three or four, um, you that all two, three or four of you have completed your applications. You wanna designate a group leader and go on to the bid form, which is on our website and or in the housing portal. And then the group leader will create the first form and invite the members of the group to be a part of that group. So you want to make sure that if it's a group of four, 
that you have three members that you're inviting and that you change your group size to four so that we know that you're putting in a bid for four and that you have a group of four. Once the invitations are submitted, your roommates will get an email saying they were invited to your group and they go onto the form next and hit accept. So by February 4th at 11.59 p.m., all four people need to have accepted their invitations to be a part of that group. Are the apartment and suite application the same choice slash button? Do you simply rank the choices within that same application? So there isn't anywhere that you're ranking anything, but like I said before, your suite and apartment style bid is for a specific size of space and not a specific space. So you're just putting in a bid as a four person group. And then whenever, if you win a bid, you win a selection time and whatever's available at your selection time is what you have to choose from. So as a guaranteed upper class student, student, you're not preferencing anything anywhere on an application because you get to select your housing. We don't select it for you. Where do you make your housing deposit? Your housing deposit is made in pit pay. So you'll go to my pit and um, in the search bar, you'll type in 2021 and a button will come up that says 2021, 2022 housing applications and information. You will click that and it will lead you right to pit pay to make your deposit of 325. And once you paid it once, you won't have to pay it again. How do we know where the LLCs are located on campus? So technically, we don't really disclose LLC locations because they can change any year based off of inventory and how many applications we have. Um, but if you have specific questions about LLCs, I would say um, to research the LLC website or to maybe reach out to our partners in Residence Life if you have any questions particular to an LLC. Uh, I have a question or two quick questions. So first okay. of all, what do we, what do I do? Because I want to do this sort of spring semester from home. Does that mean, do I still get to keep my housing for like next year or do I have to reapply for housing? So if you are not living on campus right now and your question is, do you have to apply for housing for next year? The answer is um, you have to have a completed housing application for every year you plan on living on campus, a completed deposit and a completed signed housing contract, which is a part of the application. All right. And secondly, um, um, is there like a form I have to fill saying that I won't be able, that I won't be coming to campus for the spring? So even though I'm not answering questions about the current term, Yes, if you plan on withdrawing your housing for the spring term and you don't plan on returning, there is an online withdrawal form that you should fill out as soon as possible so that we can get your housing adjustment done to your bill. Um, and then you'll contact Panther Central to schedule a time to come move your belongings out. Hi, I have a question. I have my hand up. Hi. Go for it. Hi. Yes, I'd like to know, do they have any housing where they have like um, apartment styles where it's like four rooms but everybody has their own bedroom but they have common spaces yep so four person um single bedrooms you would be looking at bouquet gardens so i would have your student um or if you are the student um put in a bid for a four person group and find three friends and then see if they win a bid but four uh, bouquet gardens is four separate bedrooms two bathrooms, living room, kitchen, um, and there are, I believe, nine buildings in the Bouquet Gardens community. It's garden style. So Bouquet A through J, but skip I. If that but, but if you don't have a group, can you just apply and who if random people come? So unfortunately not. You would have to go through general room selection and um, if a space is available in Bouquet Gardens, that's when you can self-assign yourself to a bouquet gardens apartment that has an opening. Um, I have a, sorry, I have a couple quick questions regarding um, bidding and then like what happens if you don't get the bid? 
Okay, go right ahead. So if I'm applying with like two other people for a group of three and I apply for a bid, um, is a bid, a bid just means that it gives you a time to select, right? It does, you don't declare like, I wanna, I wanna like a, be in an apartment with three singles or anything like that, right? Right, so you're bidding for the opportunity to select. So okay. you'll win a selection time and whatever's available at that selection time is what you have to choose from. Um, okay. And, and three, you, no, go ahead. Sorry. All right, if you don't get your bid and you apply for general room selection, um, what can you apply with those same roommates? Can you apply with guaranteed rooming, roommates or no? So um, you can still set yourself up to be a group of three. Um, and you would set yourself up with a group pin, which we'll send further instructions on once we're closer to general room selection, because that's when you use a pin. But any spaces that are open on campus for a group of three, you would have to pick from during general room selection. But if there are not any spaces available for a group of three, that's when you kind of have to decide, okay, it looks like two of us are gonna live with each other, the other person's gonna be our neighbor, or the three of us are gonna live on, in separate rooms on the same floor, something okay. like that. And then um, regarding gender inclusive housing, you mentioned it, I know you mentioned that it expanded earlier, but when we try, when I tried to apply for bids, it only allowed for like Ruskin and um, a co like one or two other places. So like, is gender inclusive housing has it actually expanded to all the buildings yet? And will that be updated on the form? Yeah. So it has, and it's only a recent thing that we kind of pushed through. Before last year, it was only apartment style, but we are pushing it through suites as well. So we will get our portal updated to show all the actual options that you would have as a gender inclusive group. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I do I want have to a question. Say, if you get a bid and you the when your bid time comes, there aren't a, you know suites or apartments available that you know they're they're falling below like your cutoff of what you'd want to live in. Can you just skip the bidding process then and and move into the general selection process? Yep, that's exactly what we say. So um, we do have students who you know have that particular apartment or suite in mind that they want and the time comes and that's not available to them and they kind of decide all right we're just going to skip our selection time and we're going to roll right into general room selection and pick that way so you don't have to select at that time um, obviously we give you that time because it's yours but if you decide to do general room selection then you'll just go based off of the lottery number associated with yourself and select whatever is available at that point Jenna, we only have time for just a few more questions. Okay. Um, this one is, I'm a transfer student and I got an email saying that I'm a guaranteed upperclassman. I filled out the application as a guaranteed student and I'm just not sure if I did this correctly. So if you have a confirmation email saying that you're guaranteed upper class student application was complete and you have a copy of your housing contract, then that is the first step that you need to have done for February 1st. Um, if you don't have that confirmation email, email from your application, I would say maybe try to go on again to try to apply. Um, but if you have a group of friends that you want to live with, maybe try to put in a bid. doesn't hurt. If not, you'll just go in through general room selection to pick a space. I have a quick question. Um, do juniors have higher priority in the general housing selection process? Yes. So if you're a rising junior, your general room selection days are before sophomores. So you're selecting based off of lottery number with only other juniors. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi. Hi, I've had my hand up. Um, I have a question on retention. My um, child is in a four person apartment right now, but I think only him and another person are going to retain. Um, who is responsible for those other two spots? And are they able to retain the exact same apartment that they're in this time? So the students are responsible for filling the spots for the space. So if there are currently two of them living there and they wanna live there again next year, they need to find two friends to live with in that apartment. Um, and they are able to retain in that same apartment. Okay, and those other two friends would have to be guaranteed 
um, guaranteed, right? Guaranteed uh, students. Correct. Yes, they must be guaranteed students. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I do want to reiterate, was that me or was that somebody else? I do want to reiterate that uh, the deadline to apply is February 1st. Get in your application as soon as possible um, so that you have more time to kind of think about your options and figure out your groups. If you have a group, remind your friends to apply because you don't want to have a group of four and then have one student not apply and now you're suddenly a group of three and wondering you know, what your options are as a group of three. Um, so be the responsible friend in the group and remind your friends um, to apply for housing. And I do want to highlight again um, the Selection Central website, which is a part of um, pc.pit.edu. It will just search for Selection Central and everything is organized there. And um, I'm thinking that because there are a lot of questions that are happening that maybe I might end up doing some sort of other Q&A portion or office hours for students. Um, so just keep an eye out in emails. Um, I know that we have been very email heavy with arrival and applications and everything like that. So just make sure you're being um, very thorough and reading your email so that you're getting all the information that you need. Um, but we are really good at sending out reminders and things like that. So, um, and we have been trying to be more inclusive of guardians and things like that so that you are also aware of what's happening for the application process for next year as well. Um, Amanda, do you think I, is there anything else that you think I should? Oh, and we are saving the video and it will be available to view at a later time, unfortunately for myself. So. <laughs> Um, I'm going to link the pages for the Selection Central in the chat so that everyone is able to access them. It breaks down this process um, depending on what type of student you are, from guaranteed to non-guaranteed to transfer student. And then I'll also link the pages for our housing. That way you can go on and look and see what residence halls have in terms of accommodations and amenities. That should help to answer a few questions as well. And I will say, take advantage of looking at um, the Panther Central website under housing. There are you visit videos of a lot of the buildings and to keep an eye out for social media in case we post any other videos on there for room tours and things like that. Follow us on social media. Um, we do all of those fun things like giveaways and question and answer sessions and things like that. Um, but thank you all for attending the session. Um, like I said, Panther Central is a really great resource for questions about selection and I work directly with them. So if you need anything to contact them, they do go back to 24 hours starting next Tuesday. Um, and we are looking forward to having your students back on campus, especially um, at the end of this month and then definitely for next school year. So um, thank you again. Let me know if you need anything otherwise um, stay tuned if we have more sessions. Thank you. Can I ask a quick, a quick question? So um, if you want to do an LLC and also want to be an RA, can you do both or it's only one or the other? Um, if you are applying for an LLC and you get accepted in the LLC, but you also applied to be an RA, you can't necessarily be an RA and be in an LLC unless you're an RA for that LLC. So um, you would be released from that LLC and placed in your RA assignment. Um, Is there a way to would, specify? You would have to contact Residence Life for that. But if you become an RA, that kind of um, trumps the application process and you're pulled out of your LLC assignment and you're then put in your RA assignment. Okay, thank you. Um, can, I, can I just ask, so um, there were many people that weren't able to get on this um, webinar. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but you have a capacity issue. And so while you might have a recording of this session, 
that does not allow parents or students that were not able to have their live questions answered, um, you know, the opportunity to have um, that. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to, to figure out a way where we can accommodate those that were left out. I think I think Zoom has a capacity issue. Yeah, I don't think it does. I'm, I apologize for that. We're actually on a university official license account, which has a capacity of 300 users. And I sincerely apologize that we were not able to accommodate everyone on this particular meeting, but everyone can always reach out to Panther Central at panthercentral at pit.edu to have their questions answered or give us a call at 412-648-1100. You can also reach out to us via social media DMs and hopefully that could help to counterbalance um, the inability to attend tonight's live Q&A. So again, I apologize for that. Thank you, everybody.